For the next 100 days, I'm going to be put in a mystical realm. One with dragons, cyclopses, oh, and this awesome gear. And at some point, I fight a giant spinning tree. So watch to the end to see what happens. When I spawned in on day one, I got to read a couple of cool books. Not that I understood a word that I read, but I guess they're helpful for later. Then I decided to look around and start chopping down a tree. However, in this world, tree chopping's a bit different. I basically just stripped the same log over and over until the tree collapsed on me. However, thankfully this one did break before it did, otherwise I might have died to a tree on day one. Then when I turned around, I saw a castle. Guess I know where I'm headed next. But then I did my tool upgrade. We got a wood pickaxe, mined eight stone, and then made our stone tools. Now we can check out this castle. Okay, so this place looks abandoned. Don't mind if I loot some of it. I went to the barracks and found a few emeralds and books. And when I went upstairs, there was an entire armory up here. I even found my first diamond. Look at all this gear I have now. I have the pick of the litter for iron armor. Let's just hope whatever's here doesn't actually require this type of gear. That's when I climbed a tower and looked outside. To my surprise, I saw a pirate ship stuck in the ice. Looks like I know where I'm headed next. But that's when I stumbled into a throne room with a chest behind it. It had a diamond axe with vein mining on it. And up top, I found another diamond piece. This one was a sword with sharp one. Two diamond weapons on day one, that's gotta be a record. However, that wasn't the only record I was about to break. When I stumbled upon the dungeon area, there were like hundreds of zombies coming out of it. I don't know what caused this place's abandonment, but I'm pretty sure I just figured it out. I think I probably spent five minutes just clearing out this hallway to see what was inside. And the entire thing was just for a kitchen. Okay, maybe not just a kitchen, but I did need the food. After that, I found the real dungeon, and that's when the fun began. By the time I was able to make it into each room of the dungeon, break the spawners, loot all of the chests, and finally escape, it was already day two, and not the beginning of it. I don't know how long I was down there, it was so dark, but the loot I got out of it was definitely worth it. That's when I was attacked by, I believe, the last guard of this castle. I have a feeling this was the undead king, but I ended up taking him out and getting two pieces of Prop 4 Unbreaking 4 iron armor. I guess special enchants are definitely a thing at this time. Now that the castle is basically just mine, it's time to go take over a pirate ship. When I tried to get access, I was ambushed by a ton of pillagers. Thankfully, I just killed them through a window. When I went inside and started looting, I saw some really weird things. What the heck is a rune? I don't understand what any of these things do, but I just filled my entire inventory with them. I started reading some of the descriptions, and I still didn't really understand, so I guess I have some research to do. But there was one thing I think I did understand, and it was a, a mirror? Apparently what happens is if you are in danger and you right-click this mirror, then you'll be teleported back to your respawn point? Which I'm assuming is a bed you just right-click on, because I'm not planning on dying. Then I went below deck and found a ton of ores, including diamonds, emeralds, gold, and iron. This is probably better than going mining. Other than all of the fish that I found. I don't know if I needed this. Once I was done with the ship, I decided to scout for an area to settle down or at least steal for the night. I easily could have gone back to the castle, but I wasn't sure if all of the zombies had vacated it yet. I may have missed something. So instead I crashed the party of an unwitting gatekeeper, stole his bed and slept on the roof because of monsters underneath, which I'm pretty sure were just monsters underneath the ice. The ocean's probably pretty scary in this world. Yeah, look at those things. Those cannot be friendly. I found something in my inventory called the campsite. When I tried to put it down, my entire screen glitched out and red lines appeared. Apparently, I need a flat surface to put this thing on. So I used wood to fill in all the red lines. And I may have run into one of those giant fish from Nemo. I'm not terrified, you are. But once I had it all flat, I put it down and what in the world is this? Apparently it's like a portable campsite. I don't know how portable it is. You need a flat surface. You're not gonna find those in Minecraft, but I guess it does look really cool. However, it has pretty minimal use. I then headed my way back to the castle. And yes, I can climb. I have a spider talisman I got from this pirate ship. I just didn't forget to show you or anything. It's cool living in this realm. You can gain special abilities by just putting stuff in your inventory. Like this slime heart. Apparently I now have no fall damage and I actually gained 25% regen. Oh, yep, I jumped like a slime. This is cool. Then I started my movement process to the castle. I don't think I'm gonna stay here forever, but I have a lot in my inventory and backpack that I need to get rid of. Oh, yeah, did I not mention I spawned in with a backpack? Anyway, I emptied it all out into some chests, and looks like the throne room's gonna be home for a little while. Technically, it's fit for a king, so it'll work for me. I really want to find a cool biome that I can settle down in, hopefully one without a dragon. Did I mention those were in this? But while out looking, I have found another pirate ship. Obviously, I loaded the thing getting a little bit more resources, but you've kind of seen this all before. 
But I actually got a horn from killing one of the guys, and apparently you can blow it next to some water and a captain will summon. When I got close to some of the ice, I decided to blow the horn and see what would happen. I was expecting like a pillager boss or something like that to fight. Oh no. No, 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 no. This sunken diver ship captain came out the butt of the ship and instantly teleported to hit me. I know it didn't do a ton of hearts, but I instantly got scared and clicked on the magic mirror. I'm just gonna sleep safe at home tonight, okay? I don't know what that was, but I was terrified. Hey, so remember how I'm a good YouTuber? Yep, forgot to record again. Okay, look, this time it's not my fault. I got a little carried away in searching for another area when I stumbled upon this, what I thought would be a battle tower. However, the inside is actually just really nicely decorated areas and uh, spawners. And then at the top, we have this weird cube thing that does absolutely nothing when I hit it. I even used one of my god apples to try and fight it because I was very scared. But when I did stuff to it, nothing happens. Oh yeah, also dragon's nest right there, which I'm definitely about to go fight. And no, jumping off the tower with the hopes that your slime is going to work is not a good idea. Nor is fighting electric dragon that instantly strikes you down with lightning and you teleport home. Okay, okay, I know the teleporting home thing's getting old, but don't worry, I'll get better armor soon. But to ensure that I don't teleport home right away, I decided to move homes. I know, drastic, but I figured it would deter me from using my quick little TP. Plus, I wanted to go see if I could find that captain. It did only do half a heart when it hit me the first time. Maybe I can actually take it in a fight. So I went looking, mainly for a biome outside of all of this ice, but also for the captain. Once I stumbled upon the captain, I realized it was a she, first off. And second, they have control of whatever I'm standing on and could turn it into water or ice. Without knowing how much she's actually going to hit me for, I actually did decide to run away. But later, I did start actually fighting her, and I realized I could do damage. My diamond sword was actually doing damage to her, which was more of a shock than you think. I am fighting a boss on day 8 after all. But eventually she called for backup and fully healed, which makes literally no sense at all, but okay. And there was no way I was going to fight these trident guys, so I just dipped from those. Plus, this captain is completely and utterly obsessed with me. She'll follow me anywhere. Maybe it was my cologne. So I decided to fight her head on, but pulled out something else. There was a seafood meal that gave me a ton of boost for water travel, and I'm hoping to help me fight her. Now it's one-on-one. -on -one. I eventually got her to her last bits of health, but she kept regaining it, which means I had to do a complete combo to get her to die. And with her doing more damage now, I had to just rush in. Thankfully, it wasn't too difficult to kill her, and I ended up getting her helmet. Not sure how worth it that was, but I guess that's one boss down for these 100 days. I don't want to run into another magical ghost, though. Back on the house exploring adventure, then. Maybe I'll find a beach house. Or a lighthouse, I guess. No, this is not something stupid. Hear me out. I have just released a brand new summer collection on my merch store. It has a brand new beachy TV logo design. I think it looks amazing, and I just wanted to let you all know that you can go check it out live right now. Anyway, back to the video. I eventually found myself in a forest next to what I can only assume is an actual battle tower this time. But first it was guarded by a little bit of a beetle problem. Once I took him out, I headed inside. Unfortunately, it wasn't anything epic, it was just skeletons and zombies trying to defend their tower. But at the top I did get a waste stone, which is going to be really great once I make a base of operations. And let's not forget that's still what I'm looking for right now. I found another little house with a couple villagers inside that weren't really villagers, but NPCs I guess. And I went searching for a biome that I could really settle down in. Eventually I found a cherry blossom forest not too far away from where I just previously was. And I must say, definitely the most magical forest around here. Okay, other than the one that was completely and utterly blue. Those trees look really cool. But it was actually getting nighttime, and nighttime in a mystical realm is actually super scary. So I ran back to those villagers' homes and slept in one of the beds. No way I'm getting caught out at night. But walking around in the daytime looking for a house, that's fine. Only thing I really did this day was survey the area and figure out where I wanted to build my house. And what I wanted to build my house out of. Slash how I wanted to build it, it was a lot of brainstorming. Eventually I settled upon doing a tower at the very top of the mountain. Definitely not a normal spot for me. Now this tower was a complete and utter work in progress for a few days, and more than I would have wanted. But the reason I wanted to do a tower with no access to it is because I had the spider necklace that allows me to climb walls. So making a base only I can get into was favorable. Making the tower was definitely interesting, especially with all of the slabs and stairs I had to build. I honestly had no direction when building this, so I was kind of like doing a watchtower-esque design. Oh, and don't get me started on my vein mining axe. That thing was a nightmare while doing this, especially since I was building the entire thing out of wood. One wrong click and there it goes. 
However, I did eventually have one platform finished. Now to just do the upstairs. However, before I decorated it, I built this medieval tower. I think it looks good. And it probably ties into the realm a little bit. Then I built a really cool medieval guardrail with a ton of posts, walls, and that kind of stuff. I was even contemplating using iron bars at the top just to make it a little bit pokier. Or spikier? More smaller? Pointier? I don't know. Anyway, this was the finished result. Honestly, I know it's not on perfect par with some of my other builds, but I actually quite like it. It's a bit unique, and I did it for the situation. I don't want anything getting up here. Other than me, of course, because I can climb wall. I think I mentioned that. Ooh, I didn't think about dragons. Oh wait, I did. That's why there's an interior. I thought of everything. Except for my armor, which is still iron. So it looks like we're gonna go on a mining trip. However, I have a great fear about leaving my base in this world, because I do not know what's out there. And so far, I've already run into a dragon and almost died twice. Just wait for what happens in the next few days. Eventually, I found a decent cave to start mining in. There are like thousands of ores down here. I don't know what any of them are, but I just basically started mining them. One of them was purple, gives me really cool gear, and is a little bit better than iron. I know that my goal down here is diamonds, because that's the only goal I can really have right now, but I mined it anyways. Eventually, when mining a similar blue ore to diamonds, I actually did find diamonds. And I went ahead and used a Fortune 3 book that I got earlier and put it on a diamond pickaxe so I can get more while I'm down here. Then I found a really good part of the cave I was in and I started getting a little bit more diamonds. Obviously I mined all the other ores, but the fact is I have no idea what these do. My brain cells are pretty lacking when it comes to this realm, but the only thing I do know is I need diamonds. Then I'm gonna have to go get netherite. Oh, the nether's not gonna be good in this realm. When I got out of the cave, I had like a stack of diamonds. Unfortunately though, it was nighttime, so I had to run home immediately. And now that we're finally here, I can actually craft- Ah, uh, oh man, I should try and pronounce this, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna craft these ingots up, and now I can actually make armor. This is half of an armor bar less than diamonds, so it's actually quite good. I don't have any enchants for it yet, but it looks really cool. Honestly, it looks like dragon scales. Um, un unfortunately though, dragons, uh, they, they're still gonna like one-shot me with this on. But that won't bring me down. Eventually, I'll kill a dragon. Probably. Then I went back into the cherry blossom forest and started cutting down all of the trees. I feel like I should insert a lumberjack joke here, because that just makes most sense for me. Sorry, currently googling. Let me check here. Oh, here we go. Why did the lumberjack lose his arm? He had an accident. No? Okay. You see that build down there? Yeah, I don't think my recording button's working anymore. I swear I'm not this bad of a YouTuber. Anyway, day 17, I went ahead and built this little area and caught a chicken. Now it's time to keep going. I went ahead and started production on a sugarcane farm because I really need to get enchantments. However, if you remember early on, I actually got bookshelves from one of the castle rooms. So me building this entire sugarcane farm was absolutely useless. Un unless I need what do you need sugarcane for other than books? Yeah, I can't think of anything. But it does look really cool at the end of the day, so I'm okay with it. And to actually make an enchantment table, I need four obsidians. So I had to go find that down in the caves. But when I mined underneath my base, I found something really cool. There was a gigantic lava lake right underneath my base. Which means not only will I have a ton of obsidian, but now I can actually mine down here for a little bit more diamonds. Okay, look, I know I just went mining, alright? I get it but I'm not gonna miss this opportunity. So I stayed down here and mined for a little while, eventually gathered the obsidian, and now I can actually enchant stuff. This is why I made the top of my base five wide, perfect for an enchantment table. I crafted all the diamond armor I need and started looking through what types of enchants I could get. I only have two options right now because I only have 35 levels. Hopefully I'll go into the nether soon and worry about level gathering later. But for now I'm just trying to get some sort of protection on my gear. I ended up getting protection 3 on my diamond chest plate and then from there I enchanted my sword to get sharpness 3. Honestly I'm pretty upset that I got such dull enchants but hopefully I can go to the nether and gather like 60 levels. Then I might have a chance at actually fighting a dragon. After that I went out exploring a little while until I found my first village. But it was already nighttime, so I stole one of their beds. Hey, hey, these guys have cows. Time to steal them. And waypoint. Welcome to my base in the sky. Oh, we're in the sky. All right, everybody. Flow down the water, please. Hey, none of you died. All right, we'll take you over to the pen now. I didn't think we'd get this far. And now I have two cows. The use? Um, I'm not sure. I already have all of the books I need and an infinite ham, so I, I don't need food. Uh, you're for decoration. Also, I tried to get rich at the village. That did not work. You know how farming villagers are supposed to trade you for pumpkins? Well, I went around their own biome, collected as many pumpkins as I can, converted a ton of villagers to like their last level with all the emeralds I'd gathered so far. None of them traded me pumpkins. 
I mined like 10 stacks of pumpkins, traded away like 7 stacks of emeralds just to get nothing back. I feel scammed. Okay, this dimension's treating me like crap. Let's go see what the nether's like. I am terrified to be here. I was in the nether for a little while, but I'm gonna give you some quick jump cuts of what I actually did. Currently, I have equipped a ring that makes piglins docile towards me. So I went into one of their areas, opened a chest, and every single one of them wanted to kill me. I'm back home now. I went back inside to see if they forgot about me. They didn't. I'm back home now. I found this cool boat thing in the water being guarded by blazes, jumped for it, and was instantly barraged. Thankfully, the fire is actually not what I'm scared of, and there were no, like, deadly mobs inside of here. I found another diamond sword, a couple of golden apples, some gold, and some iron boots. I'm not gonna say it was amazing, but it was better than I expected. Then I found a really weird tower with a ton of wither skeletons on top of it, and the inside had, like, literally no loot. Then I found another boat ship with a gigantic blaze- I'm home now. I got nothing out of that trip. Guess I'm back to mining in the overworld, which I don't actually mind. I do get some good materials out of here, but I don't really have quartz in the overworld. And I really don't get much XP from any of this. But I was able to enchant a pretty decent bow. Hopefully this will defend me from some dragons. Yeah, the overworld was not a good call. I'm just gonna take the nether safe and sound, not run into any giant blazes, and only look for quartz. So that's what I did for quite a few days, just gathering as many levels as I could. I did explore a couple castles as I went, but there's literally no good loot in any of these. The beginning castle that I found with like two diamonds in it was probably better than everything I've found in the nether so far. But the quartz is actually super nice to have. I'm already over 30 and I should be able to enchant most of my stuff by the time I get back. And when I ended up leaving the nether, I had 39 levels. From there, I was able to enchant every single thing that I had. Not great, but I did get enchants now. I'm probably gonna have to go back into the nether at some point and get more levels. But priority right now should be getting netherite, then I feel like I might be able to chase a dragon. I feel like I've jinxed myself, cause now I'm mining for netherite. Look, I'm not gonna give you guys a huge section of me mining for netherite, cause I swear it is just me banging against some netherrack. And for the first like hour it was, I didn't find anything. At all. Eventually my luck did start to turn around and I found some netherite, but I, I don't even care, it took too long. Once I got back home I had 27 ancient debris and started the smelting process. And I was able to switch some of my armor over, so hopefully I'll be able to switch to full netherite pretty soon. I want to get better enchants before I go fight a flying salamander. Day 35 was a pretty interesting day. I decided to go out and adventure to see what's around my base. I pray it's not a dragon. I first stumbled upon an abandoned village with a lot of hay. Then found a battle tower, which again, the only thing I really need is the waystone from up top. Something really interesting that I saw though was a skeleton get absolutely destroyed by elephants. I guess that's what happens when you shoot an elephant. Would that happen in real life? Uh, I just say don't try it. Oh yeah, and then when walking in some of the woods, I don't know what biome this is, but I'm never going back, my infinite ham decided to disappear from my inventory. Just vanish. Straight up vanish. You can see it right here. It's just gone. And then when I went back to look for it, my golden apple disappeared. Not a golden apple, my god apple disappeared. At this point, I was fed up and just went home. Day 36, I spotted a very different tower. I headed inside and there were books on item frames. What the heck is this all about? I tried to read them and I don't understand what any of these do. Then when I got to the top, I opened a chest and immediately heard the tick of TNT. I raced to grab the things that were in the chest, blocked my shield, and got hit with a ton of TNT. But this tower is not gonna take me out, I have a lot more to do. I still have to kill a dragon. Then I found an underwater drowned temple. There were multiple underwater enclosures with spawners inside, but I didn't really get anything good from here. And when I went to an underwater nether portal, I was almost killed. There was a giant fish that attacked me from behind and I had to teleport home at 1 HP. The entire 100 days could have been cancelled because I didn't click the mirror fast enough. It still haunts my dreams. But no mere fish is gonna stop me from adventuring. So I went off in a new direction from my base. And that's when I saw it. Another dragon. But my lack of gear prompted me to go directly home and start putting on netherite. There's no way I can take a dragon in iron armor, so I basically just decided it's time to start using netherite. I went back for the dragon and the fight began. I started whipping as many bow shots as I could into this dragon. I don't want it to get anywhere close to me, and if I can kill it before I even got hit, that'd be great. The dragon never even took flight and just started slowly approaching me, but at this point I was already draining her health. And when she finally reached me for her first attack, I had just finished the final blow. I grabbed the dragon's remains and actually got 12 dragon scales, which can be used to craft way better armor than I have right now. 
but 12 is a little bit less than 24, which is how much you normally need for a full set of armor. So I have a feeling I'm going to be killing a lot more dragons throughout these 100 days. Then I went back to looting pirate ships. I ended up finding one of the horns I can use to summon another captain, and I wanted to face her again. However, this time when I spawned her in, things were much different. As you know, I faced her in iron armor before, and now I'm in half netherite with a diamond sword with sharp 3. And this boss spawned a little bit differently. She had her own power-ups that made her almost 10 times stronger. The battle lasted a ton of time. She kept spawning things, mobs around her kept helping her out the battle, which I might say was not fun. And I couldn't even eat enough golden apples to survive. Eventually, I had to teleport away with her barely surviving. I know that normally I would have only gotten her helmet, but with her upgrade, I would have gotten a random legendary book. So I was actually really disappointed I wasn't able to kill her. But that mini boss isn't going to stop me from getting the dragon scales I really want. And at the beginning of the video, we actually found a gigantic tower with a possible boss on top and a dragon's nest right next to it. So that's exactly where I'm headed. I'm hoping I can kill that dragon and get enough scales to finish up a set of armor. The first stop on my little adventure, a gigantic cyclops. I don't know how many bosses I have to face, but thankfully this one was enclosed. And if you don't know how dangerous these things are, if they eat you, you die no matter what, even if you're in the best armor in the game. But my bow and arrow was my best friend and I was able to take him out. Now this cyclops den was right on top of a Medusa area. I don't really know what to call it, but I'm just gonna say Medusa area. I don't really know. Basically, in the depths below, a uh, Medusa is there. However, since the Cyclops area spawned here, Medusa didn't actually get to spawn. But that didn't stop me from finding one like four seconds later. Thankfully, I had a blindfold on me and entered the den. She was strong, but not stronger than me, and I was able to take her out and get the head of Medusa. I actually have no idea how to use this thing and later used it very wrong, but it still is a cool weapon. Thankfully for my journey, no other bosses stopped me from getting to my mission. I went back through the battle tower because I've recently learned that you can actually still fight the boss, you just need three keys to activate it. And the only way to get those keys is in those chests. And the only way to unlock all of the chests is to break two spawners per level, so I went through and made sure I did that. I was actually able to acquire two of the keys, but not three. Which means that boss is going to have to wait for another day. And at this point, I had my mind fixated on the dragon. And this one lasted about the same time as the other one. It was able to do some attacks on me, but I kept it at arm's leg for most of the time. And I finished it off with a bow, gathering even more dragon scales, but this time enough for a full set of this dragon scale. Which makes me wonder how many I might be able to collect throughout the 100 days. So I continued my journey off to find another dragon. The only thing cool in between was a gigantic volcano, which turned into a lava mountain. I don't know what biome this is, but there's gotta be a dragon around here somewhere. Eventually, I landed myself in a desert where I found another dragon's lair. This time, though, it was a fire dragon and put up way more of a fight than the rest. Okay, this thing's a bit stronger. No, oh, you stay back there. Get away from me. Nope, can't burn me if I'm in water. Better. No! Okay. Why is this one so much stronger? And with one final bow shot, we ended the fire dragon. This thing was so much tougher than the rest, and I definitely am gonna use his scales for something. Oh yeah, then I accidentally started a raid at a flying village. Nope, everything I just said was true. However, I really couldn't find the raiders, so I kind of just left them to their own demise, whether it's not being able to get up to the village or all the villagers dying. When I got home, it was basically a bit of organizational stuff, working out what I'm gonna be ending up putting on dragon armor. Which, by the way, I just made, and it looks sick. I just have to get enchants for it, and we should be good to wear it. The way I've been getting levels has been super slow recently, so I figured I should try and travel to the end and make an enderman farm. To do that, I'm gonna need blaze rods. So I headed to the nether, and then realized I still hadn't found a blaze spawner. Or a nether fortress. But that's when I actually remembered that these obsidian pillars have one blaze spawner inside. I tested them out, and they do actually drop blaze rods, so I made a platform to start grinding some blazes. It took a lot longer than normal because, well, there was only one and it was kind of encapsulated in obsidian. I was a far distance away, but I ended up getting all of the rods I needed. Actually, I think I got more than I needed. But then I needed the pearls, which I haven't really seen a ton of endermen around in any of the mentions I've been in. So I decided to use all of my gold to trade with piglins. 
I found two of them in the jungle temple and trapped them in and basically just waited for days. I only was able to get two, so it took a really long time. But once I had every single thing that I needed, I right clicked one and it didn't work. What is this? I just spent days trying to get a, what? Uh, I hate this game. Looks like I'm headed back to the nether. It's not that I hate this place. It's that I don't like getting levels here and I really wish I could just make a farm. But if I'm to sit here for the next few hours and just mine, that is my business. Okay, we have plenty of levels now. I have I have sat here for a really long time and gathered a ton upon a ton of levels. I really hope all of this is going to be enough to enchant my dragon armor. I think it will, but I might have to come back. I don't want to though. The first piece of dragon armor I enchanted was feather falling boots, but that was the only enchantment I got. Then I got a protection 3 blast protection for thorns 2 chest plate, which is actually really good. I also enchanted my pants with projectile protection just because it will help out later and then my helmet with fire. All dragons have different types of moves, so I figured that protection isn't the best thing I should go for. And then I went ahead and made another pair of boots, and I got feather falling again. I really just want to get some sort of protection or any other enchant on these things, so that's what I'm going for. But then I rerolled it and got protection 3, leaf walker, and unbreaking 3. Probably the best I could have gotten. Then I combined those with the feather falling 4 and had a really good pair of boots. And then I grabbed out all the books I'm supposed to put on my armor and started laying it out. I definitely don't have enough levels for this, but I'm just going to add what I can. Depth Strider 2 on the boots, Life Mending 1 on the chest plate, and I can't do the Berserker Ice Thorns enchant, unfortunately. Plus, I don't think adding Thorns 3 to my helmet is a good idea. Once the armor was set, I put it on, and now I look like an actual dragon. This thing looks so cool. I still need a really cool sword, like a dragon sword, but for now, this looks really cool. And I think it's time we test out this armor. I went out adventuring to see what I could find. I first stumbled upon a Cyclops, which I took out decently easily. Then I found a tower, but this one wasn't the explodey kind. It had a witch at the top and some decent loot in the chests. Also, I said hi to a cat. At that point, I kept going. I eventually found a green dragon, which was still really no match for me. But I guess this was cool to see like a different color. I think the only things I've seen so far is bronze, black, and gray. Then I went up to a floating island with actual okay loot. Although most of the good stuff in here was just iron armor, so I couldn't really use that. And when there was no bed up here, I decided to go back to a battle tower I had found, climb up it, get a god apple, by the way, and teleport back to base. From there, I was just able to sleep and go back to adventuring. I eventually made it to an ocean where I was just on the lookout for sea creatures. I don't know what prowls this ocean, but I know it could probably take me out, even in dragon armor. Eventually, a sea serpent spawned behind me and started chasing me in the water. I'm pretty sure this thing can take me out, so there was no point in running. I turned to face it in the water, shot a couple arrows, but my sword was basically doing nothing to help. I even had to eat a god apple at one point, but I was still losing a ton of hearts, so I had to teleport back home. Oh, I'm still gonna lose this fight. Then when I was just getting a little bit away from my house, a fire dragon attacked me. I got low ground to see if I could scout it out, and it was right behind a hill. Thankfully, my spectral arrows did a ton of damage as well as lit up the man so I could see him clear. I continued barraging him with arrows until he was killed, and now I have a ton more dragon scales. Still, nothing stopping me. Things went really well that night until I found another dragon's nest and snuck up on it. This was a red fire dragon that I instantly decided to face. It flew away from home knowing I was doing too much damage to it. And then when it came back to fight, it basically got stuck in a tree and I was just able to barrage it with more arrows. I killed it and that was just another dragon down. Things actually got pretty quiet from here. I was able to just kind of explore the area and not get attacked. Eventually, I found a swamp where I was going to make some boats and start boating across the ocean once more. But that's when two sea serpents jumped out of the water and attacked me. One was red and one was blue, but this time they were doing jumping maneuvers, which allowed me to use my bow to kill them off. The red died first, followed by the blue. It actually wasn't that hard and they didn't have too much health. I don't know why I wasn't able to kill one earlier, but these guys seem pretty easy. But these sea serpent scales can actually be used to craft a trident instead of just armor. So this stuff is a lot cooler. But when I did start boating off like my original plan, I came up on a rock that didn't allow boats, which was pretty shocking to me. So I decided to just swim for it and see what was on it, and then I was pulled in by a mermaid. However, these things just draw you in with songs and try and kill you. But this time, my sword actually did do work and killed her. From her, I got two shiny scales, which can actually allow me to make armor from the sea serpent stuff. I might end up crafting a set after all, although that was pretty much the end of my journey. I did head home with a lot of cool stuff I can use for later. The first thing I did with my brand new gear was make the trident. I've actually never used a trident in Minecraft. I'm not even kidding, like literally never. And the first one I'm gonna make is one off of sea serpent scales. 
Now that I have this thing, it looks super cool. I just have to enchant it. And then I remember that I had a loyalty eight book, which I guess isn't really different than three, other than the fact that maybe it returns to you faster, but it's still super cool and I wanna put it on this trident. However, I do need the other enchants, which I don't actually know, cause like I said, never used a trident before. But the first enchants I got on it were impaling and piercing, which I think are the best. Then I added loyalty and threw it off of my base. Pretty sure that landed in an unloaded chunk. All right, cool. I jumped down and it did come back to me, but that was actually a little scary. Then I basically just played with my trident for the rest of the day. Also killed some fish. Then I wanted to upgrade my sword, which would require the use of a withered bone. So I went to the nether to return to one of those towers that had a ton of withers on them. However, it didn't turn out that way. My nether journey was cut short when I ran into a demon with special powers. He had similar strength to the underwater boss that I wasn't able to defeat, and I had to leave. Well, that was a waste of a day. But I wasn't gonna let this guy stop me from getting the wither bones I need. So when I found him again, I faced him head on. This time, things were different. I was the one with the drop, and it actually didn't take that long to kill him. Plus, he dropped an enchanted book for me. So all in all, it was good. Then I went on the adventure to find a working wither skeleton spawner. Cause on my adventures, I've broken a few of the spawners. But eventually, I did find one and I was able to farm it. I sat here for a few days just waiting for skeletons to spawn and then killing them. Probably not the best life for them, but it was good for me. This will help me get the dragon sword I need, plus some dragon arrows. Ooh, maybe a dragon bow. I'm just kidding, I forget that that's a thing. Once I had been there a little while, I had over half a stack of bones that I can use to craft dragon stuff, I guess. I then was able to craft the dragon bone sword, and all I have to do now is go find a dragon, kill it, and collect its blood. Then I can change the sword into whatever type of dragon it was, lightning, fire, or ice. I was also able to add the berserker book to my pants, so I guess that helps me later for fights. Now I guess the easy part is going and finding a dragon. The first thing I ran into in the water was another sea serpent, but this time I have the sea serpent trident, so there was definitely no struggle and I definitely didn't have to eat a golden apple. But I was able to bow it down and grab all the scales. Unfortunately, nothing else cool really happened for a while. I mean, I fought some of the creatures of the night, but still not that cool. And at one point I found a gatekeeper and stole his bed again. Also might have killed him. But that's not when something cool happened. The next awesome thing that came along was a gigantic city. Okay, maybe not like a city, but like a city. I went on top of one of the buildings to check it out and I saw a pillager, but I didn't see like a ton of them, so I thought it was kind of abandoned. Just then, I found an ancient end portal. And at the time, I didn't exactly know how it works. I do now and I'll explain in a minute. I went around the town looking for stuff, but I didn't really find anything super cool. I guess the best part of this place is just the end portal. Hey, you can naturally find end portals. However, to make this portal work, I actually need 12 different eyes of ender, which I didn't realize right now. I actually thought I needed 12 magical eyes for this thing, and when I, I placed them all, it, it only placed one, so you'll see that later. But to get those, I went and grind witches in a random building I found. Look, this thing looked magical, and I found a witch spawner inside, so I just decided to sit here and grind them for a few days. Of course, I'll be needing one of the rarest drops from them. But it was fun getting to use my trident on some witches for a few days. Once I had enough, I was headed back to the ancient portal to see if this was the exact amount of eyes I needed. Which is basically when I realized I didn't do it right. This was only one of the 12 eyes I actually need. And I figured out that I had collected one of them, which was the nether eye, so we technically have two. But this is starting to look like a 200 days task. But I wasn't going to give up just yet. I still have to find dragon's blood, and I figure I can try and find some eyes while I'm out. First place I checked was a mine shaft, hoping that maybe there was like a cave eye. I don't exactly know which ones I'm looking for. I wasn't really able to find anything until I came across a guardian temple. Okay, well, it wasn't, it was, uh, it was an underwater desert temple. I, I thought it would have been guardian. But there wasn't really anything in the chests. Yeah, these eyes are going to take a while, but finding a dragon shouldn't be, so we're still on the lookout for that. Actually, it did take a really long time to find a dragon, but I found a cyclops, so I guess I'll fight that. I really thought that I could just kind of keep it in its cove, but when it started moving out, I had to back up. I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but if this thing eats me, I die instantly, no matter what I'm wearing, dragon armor or not. But I killed it and moved on. I found another one of those giant battle towers, so I decided to go check it out. Especially since I have two of the keys on me to unlock the boss. If I can find a third one in here, we can actually fight it. Probably better that I'm not in iron armor this time. I found the key in one of the lock chests I was able to open and hurried up to the top. Now it's just me versus floating boss thing. I gappled up, input the keys, and it was time to go. Apparently this is called a land golem and every single thing I did didn't even work. I went up close to it and then it started to charge me. 
after that, I was able to use projectiles, but then a flying stingray decided to attack me. I don't even know what this is about. Pretty sure he's not with the land golem, but I guess he's on his team. I kept using my trident and bow against this guy because I don't know how hard he's going to hit. It is a golem after all. He also shot fireballs, which I'm pretty sure is like a little bit less than fair, but that's okay. Because my trident was able to get him pretty low. Plus, using this thing is super fun even in the midst of a heated battle. Then I decided, what the heck, I'm just gonna charge in, chopped him up, and he died, while saying no. From the chest, I pretty much got nothing but a book and a gapple. Then some crazy sounds started to happen. And by the time I had my inventory organized, the entire place collapsed in on itself, and I was knocked off the tower. I watched as this entire thing crumbled before me. I honestly didn't know this was gonna happen, but it's kinda cool that it did. I have no idea how this is happening. There was no TNT in the building, nothing. It's just coded to fall apart. And you know what? Definitely satisfying to watch. Then I realized one of the talismans I have gives me speed in desert biomes. And I mean a lot of speed. So checking through these things for a dragon was super easy. Just look at me go, I'm pretty sure I'm the flash at this point. Then I eventually strolled up onto another end city, which has another ancient portal, probably not worth it though, since I'm already filling in one of the others. I went up to the top and three evokers were there, which I don't have any totems yet, so I was fine strolling in with my speed, killing all three of them, taking their totems and absolutely piecing out of there. There is no point for me to stay. I just got three free totems from a place that I've already been to. Let's go. Probably not gonna use it though, because this shield also gives me times 1.4 speed. However, I also realized these gave me a magical eye. Killing evokers gave me one of the eyes to the portal, which means I can place this later. And then it happened. Days upon days later, I found a fire dragon, which means I can kill this thing and get its blood. I don't have any arrows, so I rushed in to use my sword and just started critting it out. And then it flew away from me because obviously I'm the better player. It basically just squirted fire at me for a super long time until it flew away even more. And that's when it went into a Cyclops den. I actually got them both aggro at each other and they started fighting. The dragon even launched the Cyclops into the water. I'm pretty sure declaring him the victor. Then I was finally able to kill the dragon and get the dragon's blood that I need for the sword. Holy cow, it's been a long adventure. Back at base, I realized I had a ton of sea serpent scales, which is a different set of armor that I don't have currently and kind of want. I also may have made one of the best swords in the game, a flaming dragon bone sword, and then put sharpness 4 on it. Sorry, I just had to do that before anything else. But then we did actually get to the sea serpent armor, which looks really cool. I wish I had it all in one color, but it still looks really good. I also made armor stands for pretty much all of the armor I've collected over these 100 days. We have the netherite set that I used, of course the sea serpent, the original gear that I wore in the beginning of the video, and quite possibly my dragon armor if I retire at the end of this video. Which can be stopped if you guys like the video enough and I do 200 days. Quick little plug, go like the video. Okay, back to the video. Okay, with an entire new sword, an amazing set of armor, I think we can go face something even more treacherous. I've been fighting dragons, cyclopses, but nothing compares to what I'm about to fight next. I teleported to a gatekeeper's house where I had one of my waypoints set earlier. And here lay before me an ever bright dimension portal. I bought a lighter a long time ago, lit this thing, and it was time to enter. May I say that this place is actually known for a lot of amazing biomes, as well as some treacherous towers, so I can't wait to see what we find. When I spawned in, it was like an entirely different blue world. And in the Everbright, it's never dark, like ever. There's no nighttime, so we're gonna see the sun in the sky a lot. I started wandering around, found a poltergeist, killed it, saw a llama or a ram or a, this is a goat now, and eventually saw a village, which has its own custom blue villagers. I really like that. But this place still has so much to explore, so I started boating. I feel like you guys know by now I am not afraid of the ocean. I fought sea serpents, the singing mermaids, pretty much anything at this point. But to my surprise, nothing spawned in the water. It was just a beautiful ride. When I got to an island, there was a gigantic crab. Okay, gigantic in the size of crabs, that is. This thing was no joke. When we fought, it even poisoned me, but I was able to take it out and get a book. I have no idea what this does, but it's level nine, so it must be good. After that, I continued boating for quite some time before I found any land whatsoever. I think I'm losing my sense of time while I'm in here. There is no day or night cycle, I don't like it. But while I was exploring the next forest, I stumbled upon a gigantic Emerald Palace? I have no idea what this is, but it is a gigantic green... I, I don't even know. 
I got to the front entrance of what I later know as the natural dungeon and started my trek inside. The entire thing was a huge maze and the only reason I'm in here is to search for keys to fight the boss. What lie at the top of this tower is an amazing creature and something who's probably gonna kill me. But no time for that. I kept making my way up levels, checking chests, and getting batted around by a few of the guards until I finally found the top of the temple. I inserted my ki- I- I need four? Are you kidding me? I only have th I'll be back. All right, I've got four keys now. Open the door. Once it did, I was spawned in with a tree boss. However, this boss functioned a little bit differently. All of my weapons from the overworld literally meant nothing. My trident couldn't hurt it from a distance, and my sword couldn't crush any of the walls barricading it. And I was constantly getting hit by spikes from the floor. Eventually, I started using one of the axes I had been able to collect throughout this temple and started taking down its walls. Thankfully, most of its attack did pretty much no damage to me. But basically, it was a constant fight between me and him, unlocking his door, hitting him while he was trying to crush me, avoiding his spikes, and then hitting him again once he got tired out. This guy was definitely tough. I had to go through most of my golden apples and a few of those fish stews I got at the beginning of the video to give me strength. Once he was around half HP, he actually came out of his area and started trying to attack me from here. This man came into my playground, so I ran away from him like a uh, uh, chicken from a fox, maybe. I'm not good at analogies. But once he was tired out, I was able to land some really good crits on him while he tried to go back to his little den. And then from there, it was basically repeating the same process over and over again. Thankfully, I have this amazing dragon armor on, so this guy basically couldn't touch me. By the end of one of his finishing attacks, I was able to kill him and end him right here and now. The gigantic tree crusher is officially dead. Ooh, and I have a little trophy to prove it. That was it, 100 days in a mystical realm. Do me a favor and hit that like button down below and comment if you want 200 days. And if you're already down there, why not subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you know when I upload next. Or you'll know when I upload the 200 days video, who knows. Thank you guys for watching and have a great rest of your day.